Namaskar, good morning children. I am sending you this video because uh, most of the time when I was in 70, uh, my back was towards the camera and I could not do justice uh, to the children who were actually attending the class online. Uh, this is regarding the Manthan session that I took. Uh, as you could have watched very easily, we played three games first, right? Uh, so the first game was what, if you remember, the first game was where the children, they danced their bangles. And when they danced their bangles, while the bangle was dancing, they were to pick coins one by one in their fist. Okay? Uh, we didn't play, play three games, we played two games actually. Uh, okay. And the second one was where a um, handful of peanuts were put on the table. And with the help of a straw, a steel straw, two students were the participants of this game. They were the ones who were actually trying to blow it into a circle which was actually drawn on the table. So these two games are being played and if you could see, if you could remember, it was absolutely engrossing not only for the players but also for the ones who were playing it. Now you must be wondering why in one month in session ma'am is asking children to play games. So number one. It was to prove a point when I when I planned the entire session, there's a reason why we do what we do, right? So basically, I asked this question to all the children while you were playing the game. Were you aware of the expressions, of the thoughts, of the actions of the other children in the classroom? And the answer obviously came as no, they were not aware. They were absolutely focused on the game. They were focused on the peanuts should reach inside the circle one. I think Altaf got it 14 or 12 peanuts inside the circle. Uh, and Arjun got 10 peanuts and similarly we had other uh, players also playing. So they were all focused on that. While they were focused, they were so intent in accomplishing that task that they were not at all aware of their surroundings. So this is where I want to bring you on the theme and the theme is focus and concentration. Uh, I asked all the children, you've been eight years in the school, uh, how many times you've been taught, literally taught how to concentrate? So mostly the answer did not come as a positive one, though everybody tells you to focus, they tell you to concentrate, they might be telling in the PTA that the child lacks concentration or the child is not focusing. So what to do? How to practice it? Right? So the problem is, we know that we should concentrate, but we do not know how to concentrate. Okay, so this video is just to help you accomplish that task, accomplish that one thing. So I also want to tell you that um, this is a meditation while I'm speaking. You listen to my voice, you close your eyes and you will listen to my voice and you will follow my instructions. It is called guided meditation. Okay, so while my voice is on, uh, I'm just speaking, you can close your eyes and listen to it. So wherever this video is playing, just be aware of your own body. Keep your body straight, sit erect, close your eyes and slightly be aware of the sounds which are there around you. It could be the moving of fan if it is on. It could be chirping of the birds, like you can listen to here, uh, some chirping of the bird, some sound of any traffic, some whistle of a cooker if it is uh, the cooking is happening. Just be aware of that and listen to it silently. Now you are going to think about that one last marriage party that you attended. It could be two months ago, it could be four months ago. Think of the attire you wore on that day. Which vehicle was used to reach that function place or that venue of the function? How many people went from your family to attend that marriage party? So as you entered, who all were the first people that you saw? Your eyes are still closed, I hope. And as you proceeded, there were some waiters standing with very nice aromatic eatables and you picked some. What was it that you chose to eat and you served in your plate? Did it taste good? Did you pick a glass of any cold drink from any waiter's tray? 
and looked around for any acquaintance or cousin who should have been here? Did you look at the groom or the bride? Did she look beautiful? Did you dance with your friends or your cousins and enjoyed the party? Was the entire feeling a happy one when you were attending that marriage party? Now slowly gather your consciousness and come back to the room you are sitting in. Think of the place you are sitting in, the soft cushiony place. Think of the room you are in. Think of the chirping birds or the noises that you were hearing before. Rub your hands slowly and open your eyes. So now just a few questions that I'll quickly ask and you can answer to yourself. While you were traveling mentally into that marriage function, were you aware of the room? Were you aware of anything else? You were mentally traveling into that function. You were thinking of the things you saw, the things you ate, the things you enjoyed. And slowly, when I brought you back, you were again aware of the same room. This is your consciousness or your awareness. People normally say that our mind is distracted. Actually, it is not so. Mind is a very big canvas and it has lots of compartments. A compartment for school, a compartment for house, a compartment for, um, uh, you know, your friends, a compartment for your dear ones or your WhatsApp or your social media, etc. Then what happens is in these compartments, we travel with our awareness. Wherever we want to be, we travel into that zone. So mind is a very big picture. It's not the mind which is distracted. It is the awareness which is lost. And this is sometimes which our elders call mindfulness. Being in the moment, being where you are. Now, exams are about to approach and uh, maybe this is a time when you're trying hard to focus. Mummy, you know, gives you a lot of uh, mummy and papa. They try to make things better for you by giving you a room, solitude. They, they ask nobody to disturb you and you are inside the room. Maybe for 40 minutes to 50 minutes or one hour, you are inside the room. But then, during those 40 minutes, are you truly able to devote those 40 minutes to your studies? Mommy can give you a room, but they cannot, she cannot quieten this one factory. Right? So how to control that one factory? Because every time if the phone is lying beside me and the notifications are on, what will happen? The moment it is a ping, and you will say, yes, Master, you look in your phone, you leave your phone. Then again, anybody, anybody else uh, in your friends, they, they again posted something. Then again, there's a ping and you say, yes, Master. So it is like the genie of Alibaba and that you're being very obedient to the phone. This is what is distracting you. But then who is picking the phone? It's the phone which is bad? No, it is not bad. Is it the technology which is, which is bad? No, it is not bad. It is basically your eagerness to become the genie for your great master, the phone, that is distracting you. Remember that ball of awareness, that imagine that awareness is like a glowing fireball. You have to keep it in your hand. Every time it, you start losing it, hold it. When you fly a kite, what happens? When the kite starts going too deep into the sky, you pull the string, pull it back. You, you never leave this string. If you leave this string, what is going to happen? The kite is going to lose its way and maybe somebody else is going to take it away. So that happens. So you pull the string and you, when you pull the string, what happens? You have the control of the kite in your hand. So this is where the concentration and the ball of awareness has to be mastered by you. I'm teaching you how to concentrate. So number one, allow, do not allow your phone to be your master. Just put it on the silent mode or best is give it to your mother. Say one hour, I'm not going to touch it. You are going to be hard on yourself. You're going to be your own master. If you think of the Bhagavad Gita cover, you'll find Krishna holding the reins and all the five horses running in five different directions. And these five different directions, they cannot, the chariot will follow only one route. And the chariot will follow only one route because the par person in command is consciousness, the master of consciousness, God Almighty Himself, 
in this case lord krishna so you have to become that master that the reins are in my hand the five horses are your desires or your sense organs eyes ears nose taste and your skin and that is going to distract you further all the time when you start studying mummy ne kuch acha khana banaya hoga khushboo achhi aa rahi hai or maybe there's a song you were studying there's a barat going uh, on the road and you want to dance leave your book for a minute you stand up and dance doesn't matter but when you come back to your book then you come back to your book no thoughts of any barat or dance should be in your mind that is where you will actually carry that ball of consciousness and hold the reins in your hand so today's month and session was entirely dedicated to this and we did it we discussed it we discussed the problems the the reasons for distraction how we can control it what children do somebody says we we keep it silent somebody says i i i get distracted very easily because this i want to watch the live session which my friend is doing but then who is becoming a servant to these desires you yourself so if you want to be your own master if you want to learn the art of concentration you can do it hold that rein in your hand hold that desire in your hand and be your own person who is going to put the restrictions on yourself yourself okay so uh, do let me know your thoughts do let me know whether i've explained it enough and do let me know if this makes sense to you if you are really a eager listener or a seeker i'll send you wonderful videos based on that okay thank you namaskar